Dutch but fights. Dutch, but not so much. No. <laughs> <laughs> he may get a couple free beverages before the yeah, tour is over. I'm sure he will. Here's O'Neill Wilson turning away and almost getting away. First down catch for the Toronto native up to the 48. O'Neill Wilson, the wide receiver on the play, he's right out here. And he's often the forgotten man when you have Paris Jackson and G. Roy Simon and Manuel Arsenal, and he just makes a nice run after the catch. Lions go, hurry up. Remember, they scored 17 points last week in the final, 4-0-2. Jackson just gets it away. Paris Jackson couldn't get it. Barrett Simpson on the deflection has the interception, his first of the year. And everything's going Winnipeg's way. Second interception tossed by the Lions. Rona, proud sponsor of the CFL. Rona doing it right since 1939. Back here and back to Fred Reed, and he's gone! Fred Reed, touchdown! some help from Yvette St. Bernard, the tailback right in front of him. There's Fred Reed behind him, and he gets a block on Juwan Armour right at the point of attack, and that's all Fred Reed needs. Boy, he's got to the second level all night, and he takes that one 53 yards. He's over 200 on the oh, night. He wasn't doing it yet. And maybe a bomber yeah, record in sight. I was going to say, what was that record again? 249, so he's close again. Dutch will call a tender hamstring. Taunting. Winnipeg number 62. Steve Worley getting a penalty for taunting. 10 yards applied on the kickoff. So four and a half minutes into the fourth quarter. And a silence yeah. of a run by Fred no, Bar uh, Reed. We ain't out of him. Season high rushing totals already with a lot more game ahead of him. Extra point. And it's a stunning 20 point lead for the Bombers. Only two guys, the two linebackers on the play for the Lions that can make a difference here. That's Juwan Armour and Javi Glatt. And when that block by Benson Bernard on Armour, that slows him down. Javi Glatt got way too close to the line of scrimmage, so he couldn't scrape to that run. And the defensive coordinator, Mike Benavides, for the BC Lions cannot believe what is going on. The Bombers being able to run the ball so well. And this is points off turnovers taking advantage when you get that big turnover because this is how it all starts. Kiyu Craver wins the race back to the football with Paris Jackson, tips it up, that ball in the hands of Baron Simpson, and that turnover turns into points. What's up, everybody back in Tampa, Florida? Everybody back in the big? Trying to bring it home. We're going to bring it home, man. Well, Fred Reed has regained with emphasis the rushing lead in the Canadian Football League. Hey, it ain't over with. Yeah, this would make the it break feel over. a whole lot better for Winnipeg with yeah. the back-to-back -back against Saskatchewan. And it was a dangerous game for the Lions. If they lose three and five with Montreal back-to-back -back is not what they were looking forward to. And there's Rolly Lambala on the return. Flag down as Labala takes it across midfield. An illegal block on the Lions, and this return will come back. And nothing going right for BC. Legal block, blocking below the waist. BC number 13, 10 yards penalty, first out. I don't think Ryan Greismullen understands the rule, and the rule is on an interception or on a kick in the kicking game, you can't block below the waist, and he he throws a cut block right at the point of attack. 
We talked a couple of weeks ago about the special teams penalty problems Wally Bonner was having. Last week, there were just two special teams penalties, an offside and a procedure. There's G. Roy Simon, a catch in front of Javon Johnson. There's still time for Jarius Jackson. Let's have another look at the Grace Mullen infraction. Yeah, I just see it. And this is, there's Grace Mullen there. He, he's, he's the lead blocker. And he sees he's out there, and this is just not understanding the rule because you cannot cut block in the kicking game. First down, Lions. And that pass misses the intended target, Simon over the middle. The Bombers doing this defensively in the second half without Fred Perry and Dorian Smith not even in the lineup tonight. So two big absentees from that line, uh, Bomber front four. Well, they just must be playing with a little more jump in their step. There's Mark Nelson, the defensive coordinator, because they haven't played with the lead very often. Jarius Jackson, a 75-yard opening drive touchdown not much since takes off here first down dropped with the bomber 45 big first down for jarius jackson a 14-yard run yeah, he's got to keep it moving and try and call as many plays as he can on the line of scrimmage down by 20 but it really hasn't been a game where you could say that jarius jackson didn't perform well he's played well he just hasn't had as many opportunities under nine minutes ago, first down. Long out, go. long out, picked off. Javon Johnson. It's a quick six for Winnipeg. Touchdown. Third interception of the night. And that bomber defense has another major score. Well, and now you can put part of it on Jerry as Jackson. <laughs> Throw that he doesn't want to look over there to tip it off. What he doesn't see is that Javon Johnson, you see him looking this direction. He's trying not to tip off that he wants to throw the out to the opposite side. See, he looks down the middle and then just turns and lets it go. But Javon Johnson had not moved. He was just baiting that throw, took it to the house. Fourth interception on the season for Johnson, who had three all of last year, 72 yards on the return. And Mike Kelly hasn't felt better than this all season long. Sadiq Shabazz has a couple of touchdowns for the defense, and Javon Johnson has the latest. But don't try me twice. CG Roy Simon here earlier in this drive. He's going to run it out. And watch how Javon Johnson here plays a little bit off him. Okay, now that sets up what happens on this play. Same pattern, same player, but this time he waits and baits it, and that's why when Javon Johnson got to the sideline and looked in our cameras, he said, you can do it to me once, but try it twice in the same drive, and I'll take that baby to the house. 27 unanswered points. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers have taken flight tonight in Vancouver. Martel Mallet on the return. He's got a good one. Down the sidelines, and Sean Main will push him out. They'll mark him at the 36. But the Lions have a long way to go now. Yeah, they really do, and, and they're going to have to start pushing the ball deep, trying to get some quick scores, get some good field position here by Martel Mallet. You heard Farhan earlier talking about the Lions may get Stefan Logan back. They could put him on returns or put two in the two or even do what Winnipeg has done and possibly play them both in the backfield at the same time. A team that had scored 71 points in the last two weeks, stuck on 10 tonight. Jackson dancing, looking for something, and now an open man. It's Arsenault stepping out. 
You know, I, we talked to Jarius Jackson yesterday in the press conference about his arm strength, and he said, you know, sometimes it's a blessing, and sometimes it's a curse. I found it interesting that he would admit to that and just say, you know, yeah, sometimes I can thread it through a needle or wait a little bit longer on a break, but sometimes I rely on it and it gets me in trouble, and it did on that out. First down, pressure gets outside. And now brought down, and there's Doggett and Lobendon converging on the quarterback, and there is Jackson as, as durable as they come, and I don't remember the last time he was slow to get up. No, and, and he... he you, you've got to love, if you're a Lions fan, the, the fight in the dog and Jarius Jackson being down as far as he is to not hook slide. He hit his head on the turf pretty hard there. Joe Lobendon coming over, and he decided to take those hits. And it's the follow-through at the end. Being down by 27, you, you've got to love the courage and, and the, the want-to factor there from Jarius Jackson. But... Buck Pierce knocked out of last week's game. And now Jarius Jackson in a similar situation as Travis Lule warms up on the sidelines. And actually, the challenge flag has been tossed by the Bombers. And when we were watching to see what happened to Jarius, I'm sure the Bomber fans noticed that ball pop loose. And I think Mike Kelly wants to see if that was a Lions fumble. Lule knocked a little woozy last week in relief. Buck Pierce not even dressed tonight. Zach Champion is the third string quarterback behind Travis Lule. So real lack of experience after Jarius Jackson. You mentioned the big hit that, that Lule took in Toronto he bounced back said he has he doesn't have any history of, of concussions neither does Jarius Jackson but boy did he take a hard one there just talking about his durability earlier in the week uh, the only time he's ever had an injury problem a thumb injury in training camp a few years back and well Jarius goes to the sidelines this play is under review Let's see if Jarius is Jackson is down by contact here. There's Joe Lobendani. It's underneath there. Hit. Tough to tell by that angle whether or not the ball came out. This angle may tell a better story. That ball looks like it's popping out. And now Jackson's down. So do they consider that control as it lands back in his lap? Yeah, but Derek Doggett, when when he is underneath Jarius Jackson and Jackson is lying on top of him, that could be considered by the officials down by contact. Bang, bang play that the command center is going to have to take a long look at. He hadn't touched, I think you're right, Chris, but he was on top of, of Doggett. Upon review, the ruling on the field is overturned. It is Winnipeg ball, first down. That's so another saying, turnover. They're saying that doesn't matter. He didn't touch the ground. So Jarius Jackson had lost control of the ball before being down by contact, and it was recovered by the Bombers. So they get the football so adds insult to the injury and it's now 28 takeaways for Mike Kelly's defense on the season that is the league lead and three straight lion possessions result in turnovers on a long night for a guy that will eventually be the all-time winningest coach in the Canadian Football League Fred Reed Will it be an historic night for him instead? But this has been the story, Chris, right here. It's It's been the Bombers running the football and almost on a record pace because the best ever for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 
Blaze Bryant, 94, as you mentioned, 249. But look how close Fred Reed is. Lots of time here left, just under seven minutes. I'm and this has worried, been the story. I remember Dave Ramey. Former Argo and Bomber. And can Reed climb that illustrious list in Bomber history? Now on the other side of that coin, you consider uh, what, what was a real issue for this Lion defense before the addition of Juwan Arm. You go back to games against Saskatchewan, Hamilton, Edmonton, Calgary, their first four of the regular season. They gave up a bunch of yards along the ground and were real concerned with that, especially in the, in the Hamilton game. And thought they had somewhat fixed the problem with the addition of Juwan Armour, but it rears its ugly head again for Mike Benavides. That's third down. You wonder if they'll leave Fred Reed in. The record, not necessarily a team record, as important as keeping him healthy for a couple of weeks from now. You have a Walls lead onto the field. You have play thrown on that. And here comes Ryan Grice Mullen. So not enough guys on the field, and Gavin Walls late to the party. Yeah, he got on late, so he has to take that long walk back to the sideline going, yeah, I wasn't aware we were punting the ball. But, you know, the other thing is, Chris, I'm sure Mike Kelly not even sure that, that Fred Reed is close to a team record. But record or not, you Should he be in with six minutes to go and a 27-point lead? No. When you've had him nicked already. Legal substitution. Winnipeg number 98. Can yard penalty repeat third down. Especially when you've got a guy like Bernard who's looked so good as another capable guy. Yeah, no question. And I agree with you 